is about how to grow fava beans in a way that you can get really good seed. I grow fava beans for seed. I give them to people who grow fava beans for the restaurant trade. In this bucket, in the fall, maple leaves were put in there with rainwater. And now it's winter and the maple leaves have rotted into a liquid we could call it leaf water. The leaf water uh, from these rotted leaves has an abundance of something called fulvic acid. Fulvic acid has many uses, but let's take a look at one in particular for fava beans. So this jar has leaf water in it. But over time, when I harvest the fava beans, on their roots are little root nodules. And we see a, a clump of them floating there. I've added some molasses to that because this little uh, thing that's floating there are uh, bacteria that fix the nitrogen for the fava bean. And I want to make a inoculate that I can soak the beans in in order to have them germinate and to gather nitrogen in a better way. So here are little root nodules on this fava bean that has been inoculated with commercial inoculant, a powder, and they, they're okay. They've, they kind of are starting to uh, colonize there. But this, uh, these are uh, the rhizobia of uh, fava beans that have been inoculated with the rhizobium that I made rather than the commercial inoculant. You can see that these more readily form a colony of rhizobia, whereas these that are cultured individually in a lab, they have a tendency to form individual little nodules. Now it turns out that research shows that the plant roots of the favas are attracted to what is created by the colonial form of the rhizobium rather than the form of individual bacteria clusters. I put them in there in the top, and then after a few weeks, they dissolve and form a slurry down at the bottom. I mix it up, add one tablespoon per liter for a soaking solution to give fava beans the hint that you want them to grow a lot of rhizobia to fix nitrogen rather than individual bacteria. The fulvic acid helps in the breakdown and the support of these uh, rural rhizobia. This is some fava bean rhizobia colonies. When they form a colony like this, they put out signals that the plant roots that receive the nitrogen um, can utilize it more readily. So it's a colonial form that is the most valuable. And these are the ones that we're uh, fermenting in the fulvic acid so that they will decompose, but the bacteria go into the solution, and then we soak the beans in a diluted solution of the rhizobia, and they enter into the bean when it germinates, and then they fix more nitrogen. So that's the idea here. Over the years, I found that a large part of garden fava beans is trying to keep them contained, and they grow kind of like a pea. Here's a fava that's deep into a flowering right now, because it's being supported by this trellis. And the trellis is simply a cheap bar put in there with some uh, twine from hay and uh, put so that it's wound like a double like that. And what you can do is just put the fava bean up in the middle of it. 
and it grows up through there. And then all down the line here, they're supporting each other when the wind comes and they don't break down. So we had a storm come through last night. That's some rain, much of the shade, and now there's this real fierce wind coming through here. And here's the uh, Paula Bean Charles, two strands. And that holds the beans. So what happened is that these beans have been growing, and you know, I sowed them in October. They are bearing a lot of flowers up off the ground, which is really good at this time of year. And um, if we go in close, we can see that in a lot of these places here, let's find one. Here we go. There are beans being held here. And let's go even further down where they started. And this is a really nice quality. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven very large beams in the pod. And the trolling allows the plant to do that which is a very, uh, very beneficial when you want to grow a salva bean for seed, which is what I do. So in a week or two, I'm going to cut the top out of that stalk. And what that's going to do is make another end of the fava bean down here with these little green shoots. We're going to shoot out and do things like this. have a new shoot come out of the bottom. This part right there, the growing tip, it can be harvested. And the flowers and the very young green leaves in the middle there can be chopped up and added to salads. I like to chop this up with a little sauerkraut in the morning as a garnish for the vegetables that we eat. The beauty of this is that this um, shoot here is very rich in a substance called levodopa. And it turns out that levodopa is a precursor to dopamine and that levodopa is a remedy for Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, and all kinds of AD, HD, ADD, PTSD, POCD, OCD, all of the Ds. Levodopa is a remedy for many of the afflictions that are happening, and the fava bean is a powerhouse of the production of levodopa. That this amazingly powerful and wonderful plant can help us with its flowers and growing chips and beans to heal the epidemic of anxiety in today's world. Thanks for watching.